One approach is what we call API contracts. And I'm sure you're familiar with things like open API spec. So if we do a spec first design, what it might look like is you have an API, you might design a Swagger file, open API spec, RAML, whatever you, and you would publish that document to all of your consumers. And that's version one of the API. At some point, you need to change your API to version two. And this is usually where we see problems because at some point, one of the consumers has lagged, hasn't got the new property, hasn't made, you know, implemented the new feature. And this is when we break things. So the specification still gives us a really good communication tool, but it doesn't prevent breaking changes. This is where consumer driven contracts comes in. It reverses that flow of contracts where instead of the API pushing it out to the consumers, the consumers actually say, well, this is what we need of you. And the API has to make sure it supports them. And if it supports them, we're gonna feel really reasonably comfortable that we're not gonna break them because we can't make a change if we're not compatible with the contract that the consumers have given us. We're gonna talk more about this shortly. So what is contract testing? Let's dig in a bit further. We like to think of it as an alternative approach to end-to-end -end integrated testing. What it focuses on instead is it looks at all the integration points on a map as opposed to the whole system together and says, what are the individual needs of each side of that integration point? And we test each side of that integration point separately and capture the integration needs of that, of that application. And what's great about this is we just need to look at a single component at a, at a time. So for example, if we're working in the front end, we might just record the needs of that front end website of what it has on its microservice A. And we're gonna document that in that place. We don't need to worry about microservice A actually being there for this test. Same thing for microservice A. If we're gonna make a change there, we don't need to worry about what all the other applications are and what they do specifically. We just need to know their contracts to verify them and in the case of microservice A, it also has downstream systems it, it relies on. And so it would have contracts with that as well. But again, we're just testing microservice A here. And the benefits of that is it's much simpler. You're always testing a single integration at a time and you don't need to deploy it. Secondly, because you're not deploying it, you don't need dedicated test environments. That means they run on a dev machine. And because they run on a dev machine as a unit test, you get fast, reliable feedback. You also get tests that scale linearly in time because now they're more like a unit test. You're not bringing in the rest of the universe just to be able to run your test suite. Those test suites run independently of yours. And because you're testing things independently, you can now release them independently, which is great. And lastly, because we now have all the knowledge of the contracts between all the components, we statically know at release time which components are compatible with one another because we have the contract that specifies what they do and we have the information that knows which ones have verified that contract. So we have this static ability to coordinate the release by knowing the entire state of the system at release time. And this is where Pacta tool comes in. It combines that, that idea of fast unit tests on either side of the interaction, oh, sorry, of the integration point and it uses contracts to make sure that those unit tests don't drift. So it's an open source tool. Uh, we call it a consumer driven contract testing tool. And we'll, we'll get into that later. And it makes it easy to test things like microservices or distributed systems quickly, independently and safely. It was originally created for microservices, but it actually has nothing to do with microservices. It's just about communicating over the internet. So protocols like HTTP with JSON or message queues uh, any type of message queues, passing JSON, XML, and so on. If you can talk that, then you can test it. So we have use cases of embedded devices using using Pact, websites, backend, and so on. But the classic use cases are things like React websites, native mobile applications, RESTful microservices, and message queues. And its main goals are to remove the need for end-to-end -end integrated tests, reduce the reliance on complex test environments, and in some cases, remove them all entirely as well. Okay, so let's talk about how Pact works. And we'll start with HTTP first, and then we'll look at how we do it for asynchronous things with messages. We'll start by getting some terminology. Let's say you have a JavaScript website and it needs to talk to a backend microservice. We call the website the consumer, 
because it needs to get data from the microservice. And we call the microservice the provider because it's going to be providing data and capability back to that consumer. And the HTTP messages or interactions that go on between um, these systems, the sum of all of those we call the contract. So in this case, we're getting orders one, two, three, four, and we're getting back some response. So what this looks like in terms of actually doing it? Well, as we talked about before, if we were to do an integration test here, ordinarily, we'd stand the provider up and we stand the consumer up and we'd issue requests from the consumer to the provider and make sure it all worked. Of course, if we did this in pact, well, this provider may also have its own provider and that provider may have its own provider. And all of a sudden, we're standing up all these services. So with Pact, we never have those two things talk to each other. We only are ever testing one application at a time and we're gonna capture its view of the integration point. So step one is to test the consumer and this is where we capture the contract. And we, what we do is we talk, we get the consumer to talk to a mock of the provider that Pact provides. So let's say we need to get an order one, two, three, four, and we expect to get back some response. We repeat this process over and over for all the interactions that this consumer has of that provider. At the end of that test session, um, we've got all the integrations we need and the packed mock is gonna check that the consumer makes the correct API calls. So it, it does what it says it does and that it can also handle the response back. If the consumer doesn't and fails, we're not gonna serialize a contract. So step two, at the end of that test session, all those requests are gonna go up into uh, what we call a packed broker, something like Packflow, which is a commercial version of the broker. And that's where we're gonna share version and collaborate on that contract. On the, uh, the third step is where we're gonna test a provider. So this is where we verify the contract. We call it contract validation. So Pact is gonna go out to the broker, pull down all the contracts for all of the consumers of this provider and it's going to replay the request against the provider. And if the provider responds with the correct shape response, we're gonna feel pretty comfortable that it's, it's matched the interaction and it's able to do what the consumer needs. What the verifier is gonna check is that it's gonna find all known consumers of the provider. It's gonna check that the provider can respond to all requests and it's gonna match all the responses, response details from that request. So for example, the correct headers have come back, the correct status code, the correct body. And if we get that right, we're feeling pretty comfortable that our two unit tests aren't going to drift. Let's talk about how Pact works for asynchronous messages. So things like ActiveMQ, Kafka, Kinesis, SNS, so on and so forth. So in this case, let's assume we have a Kafka queue and we have a product catalog website that's gonna be consuming messages from a products queue topic uh, that's gonna be pushed, published from a Java order management system. We're gonna call the product catalog system the consumer because it's gonna be consuming the messages and the order management system is what we're gonna call the provider, sometimes it's called the producer. And the message that goes over the Kafka queue as well as the metadata, so in this case, the topic and the content type. Again, we're gonna call this the contract. So how does it work? As before, we're not going to get the real provider to publish a real event to a queue to test the consumer. Same reason as before, it means we need to set up more and more state. So we're only ever looking at one thing at a time. When we, again, we're gonna start with the consumer as well. So step one here is to get packed to mock or pretend to be the queue. So in this case, Pact is gonna push a message to the consumer and get the consumer to see if it can um, deal with that message. So all it's gonna do is invoke the message handler and check that the message handler was able to successfully process the event. In this case, uh, it's a order event. Similarly, step two, we're gonna serialize that contract and share it to a packed broker where we can version, collaborate and manage on it. Step three, we're going to get packed to replay that request. I'm uh, sorry, not to replay that request, we're gonna get packed to invoke the provider's function th that produces the message. So what we do is we trigger that function 
through code and we get it to produce an event. And if that event for that um, scenario matches what's in the contract, again, we're satisfied that it can do the right thing. So what PAC's gonna do here, just confirming, it's going to invoke the message provider function and it's gonna check that that function produces the correct message as well as metadata. 